I would see him and I will realize how foolish am I not to heed God's calling because of the excuses I have that I'm not valid. There's no one excuse that is a tiny bit valid even if it sounds rational. We are not pragmatist here. We obey, period, whatever the cost. Because we believe in our God. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? We will enter because God will save us from the furnace. But even if He does not, we will obey because he is worthy to be obeyed Some, sometimes our life it's, it's, we don't feel the power of God in our life why? because on the small things that God is telling you to do you, you don't want to do pay my encouragement and my exhortation is obey and that I tell you you will thank God you will thank God for your obedience I remember Jack when when Dennis was under me you know, I was discipling him and uh, for a long time then one day I told I told Dennis hey Dennis next week you're teaching hindi pa siya turo eh sabi niya Bam, hindi pa already. That's it. Next week you're teaching, sabi ko. <laughs> and yeah, he knows that story. And from that on, ano yung pastor na? <laughs> you know, you did that to me too. I, I did that to you, Oh, how? That, okay. Please share. Can you please share? I remember the time, uh, I was still, you were prodding all of us in the Bible study start our own uh, but I, I remember telling myself I don't think I'm ready you know, so I never really started anything and then one time I think there was a session in CCF and about, what, about the end times or something no? and then you were heading one group and then I said I'll attend and then so I attended your group and then uh, so we I attend here you, you thought and then in the next session you said uh, the kid can't make it you take over or something like that mm. and then I said oh Okay. Then, uh, but, uh, and he said, don't worry, their guide questions anyway. Just follow it. So I did. And so I conducted the first session. I was so nervous. I prepared all that. It went well. And I said, okay, Bob, I'm done. And then, uh, oh, no, I, I, you take over the next session. And he said, no, it's yours. <laughs> so I said, oh my gosh. And then, and then after that, I don't know, fully, fully, now I have a confidence that somehow. Although, uh, siempre, you know, I, it, you know, it was not. Uh, I started on kind of like school, but I guess God helped me. Help me until, you know, where we are now, we and I are having a couple of things, and we've grown. And then um, now that you know, I started this uh, Bible study in the office, so yeah. You know, anyway, I'll talk. Uh, I'll give my testimony about that later. But you know, uh, it's, yeah, because you started. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and no regrets, right? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's easy, right? Uh, no. <laughs> it's not. I like, we, we know that, right? Good for God because you're busy. Ah. You have to be careful. It's tough, but it's for God. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Um, Erwin, can you read verse thirteen of Exodus chapter four? Wow, right? What a response of of um, of Moses. Please, Lord, now send the messenger by whomever you will. Oh, 
what was that? You know, I'm afraid they might not listen. God gives three signs. After giving three signs, Sabia, but God, I cannot speak. What does God say? Oh, don't worry. I'll be your mouth. Now, Moses has no more excuse, right? But what does he say? Lord, send somebody else. I mean, technically, what Moses should have said is, Lord, here I am. Send me. He had no more excuse. But he does not react that way. But tells God to send somebody else. So apparently for Moses, no matter what the sign, no matter what the promises, no matter if God says, I will be with you, I will be your mouth, just be there, Moses does not want to go. He has no intent of obeying. How about you guys? Do you have an intent of obeying God? I, I really desire that you do. At tuloy, nagalit si God. Verse uh, 14. Ate, can you read that? Ate mo dead? Wait here. Verse 14. Yeah. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses and he said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levi? I know that he can speak well. And behold, he is coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You know, the Lord, what does he say? Then the anger of the Lord burned against Moses. And the imagery here is the nose, the nose, nostrils of Yahweh, of God, was burning. The imagery here is a raging bull ready to charge. God was really upset. In fact, not upset. He's angry at Moses. He really doesn't want to obey. Yet God made that concession. He said, okay, I'm sending Aero. By the way, look, he's coming already. God knew. Verse 15 and 16, um, uh, Anton, Luke 4, verse 15 and 16. Ah, sorry, 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 Exodus, Exodus, my mistake. Yes, yes. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be a son of for you, and you shall be to him as God. Yeah. You know, in ancient Egypt, there are high officials called the mouth of the king. And what they do is they just act an, as an intermediary for the pharaoh and the people. And their job is to say precisely in the same form, tone, and words what pharaoh would say. Um, Hazel, verse 17. Take this staff in your hand so you can perform miraculous signs with it. Yeah. Take this staff which you shall perform miraculous signs. For us, the readers, we now wait greatly to see will Moses obey God. Because at this very moment, He's giving every excuse in the book not to follow God's prodding. You know, I'm reminded of Jesus, right? Like Moses, uh, Jesus, like Moses, had a very normal life, right? Jesus, in all appearance, had an ordinary death, uh, ordinary birth. He's, 
his upbringing is in fact below substandard he was just a carpeting son yet his mission was great Moses is now a forgotten man forgotten he's now a shepherd remember shepherd are the most despised person in Egypt and yet he has a monumental task for us we might be easily we could be critical with Moses right we might and we would we would say why did Moses not immediately obey um, God why was Moses reluctant in obeying God you know the Bible is portraying here Moses as a as a human being flesh and blood who has fears so if God has a product in you guys and you have fears hey, that's as expected remember God is telling Moses to go back to Egypt and who's in Egypt Pharaoh and what is Pharaoh to do Pharaoh wanted to kill him so if you ask me I would probably act no different than Moses I would be afraid I would I would uh, give excuses but let this passage remind us that it is not ours to say if we will obey or not let it be a reminder that all that God wants from us is obedience and nothing else I shared to you earlier that I have a I have a sharing right and some of you especially my men in my D12 you, you, you read it because I shared it via text to you guys um, last Thursday we did not meet and we had a day group meeting here in C uh, here in Zoom with CCF Alabama. And I remember um, Pastor Joby said they're looking for volunteers. Volunteers to serve in CCF Alabang to share the gospel or to lead a Bible study for frontliners. Frontliners treating COVID patients who are uh, living in CCF Alabama. Um, for some reason, God spoke to me. And God told me, Hey, Bobby, I want you to volunteer. So I discussed it with my kids, discussed it with my wife, and my wife and my my kids especially didn't want me to volunteer they were concerned for my health and I told them you know in light with Psalm 46 verse 1 remember I told them kids honestly I do understand your concern but if this is the calling of God then God will protect me and I told my kids, kids, realize this also. That in the event that I, I minister to them, I get sick, and I die. That's the worst thing that will happen to me. Sabi ko, that's the, worst, that, that's the best way for that to go. Serving God without fear. So, having said that to my kids, I text. Pastor Joby and I told him Pastor Joby I'll volunteer um, just tell me basically how will it go <clears throat> will it be via Zoom or will it be live but I knew it was live eh? so um, and he said he's, he told me Bobby um, by the way you know I'm afraid of getting COVID right but 
when God convicted me to serve Him in that manner, I had no fear. Remember, uh, I shared to you, to you guys, I, I forget who said it, that all of us are immortal. I repeat, all of us are immortal until God calls us. No disease will kill you until God calls us. I believe in that. So I volunteered. Sabi ko, I believe in God. He will protect me. And if He does not, then so be it. That was the design of God. And I had no fear. I was really ready to go. I text Pastor mm-hmm. Joby. Uh, sabi ko, Pastor, I'm willing to, ano, to volunteer. And he said nga, wala nga nang volunteer. <laughs> But sabi niya, Bob, you know what? I can't accept your your ano your uh, your service because um, you have a family and you have kids and it will be too much for the church to take the responsibility. And I told pastor, you know what pastor? I I take that from God. That you know, God doesn't want. Because remember God speaks to our authority. But for me, I was telling my wife, the mere fact that I was willing to obey God's prodigy in itself is a blessing. That it did not turn out the way I wanted it, and that's still God's design, right? I have no I have no control over that. But what we have control is will we ob- will we be obedient to the prodigies of God? Two takeaways from this. First is this. When God saved you, God saved you to serve Him. Remember that. God saved you to serve Him. Are you serving God? Are you, are you being the salt and light of God? Are you being an ambassador of God? Right? Are you heeding the proddings of God? Second, 